Here's the third part of the video series about my self-designed plywood canoe. Hi, I'm Jake and here's the third part of the video series about my self-designed plywood canoe. In the last video I showed you the stitch and glue process as well as the fiberglassing of the outside of the hull. In order to prepare the inner side of the boat for fiberglassing, I sanded it with an eccentric grinder and cleaned it with a vacuum cleaner and a damp cloth. <coughs> I then made some cutouts into the frames for the inner gunwales. After that I taped the frames temporarily into the hull. Then it was time to make the epoxy fillets. At first I put tape around these fillets. I then cut the fiberglass tape to the lengths of the fillets. After all the fillets were prepared like this, I mixed peanut butter style epoxy and put it into a plastic bag. I then squeezed the epoxy paste out of a little hole in the plastic bag into the fillets and crowded the paste with a piece of plastic. Next I put the pre-cut fiberglass tape onto the fillets. After that I mixed unthickened epoxy that I rolled onto the tape. Once everything was cured, I sanded it by hand. In order to prepare the boat for the inner layer of fiberglass, I cleaned it with a vacuum cleaner and a damp cloth. As the outer side of the boat was already sanded, I protected it with a self-adhesive plastic foil. After that, I unrolled the fiberglass fabric so it laid evenly on top of the boat. I then tried to put the fiberglass fabric into shape as well as I could. Once I was satisfied with the result, I poured non-thickened epoxy over it. Therefore I used a spatula and a roller. After a few hours, when the epoxy was tacky but not cured completely, I put a second layer on top of it. The fillets in the bow and stern chambers were only made with thickened epoxy. Now the hull is finished, except the varnishing. So I started making the gunwales. Therefore I bought a lot of pine wood strips at a length of 2 meters that I connected by a scarf jump. In order to get clean cut, I made a jig where I cut one edge to an angle of 5 degrees. Then I clamped the pine wood strips to it and cut it with a table saw. At last I glued the pieces together with honey style epoxy. With all the gunwales prepared, I wanted to know if they fit to the coman. Therefore I clamped the outer ones to the upper plate and found out that I couldn't bend it to the shape of the coaming. Then I marked the highest line of the gunwales that I could reach and cut the bow and stern parts of the boat flush to this line. But one day when I came home from work, I found this. The storm had torn the terrapolin apart. Luckily my wife wrapped it around the canoe to protect it from the rain. Until the end of the storm, the canoe stayed inside our living room, but then it had to move to some other place. We decided to put it into the garage, hoping that I can finish it there. As I was a bit concerned about the stability of the seats, I made them of ash wood. Each joint was made of two wooden dowels and glued together with epoxy. Once all surfaces were coated with epoxy, I put the pieces together and put some clamps to it. When the seat parts were cured, I rounded the edges with a router. After that, I sanded it with a grinder and by hand.
For the thwarts I made a quarter template and I kind of mirrored the contour to the wood. I then cut it out with a jigsaw and used it as a template for the second thwart. And again I rounded the edges with a router. Of course I made all parts slightly too long at this time. Also I used these parts to adjust the position of the second inner gunwale. The next things I made were the inner gunwales which consists of two layers. The layer that will be mounted to the hull will have several small gaps in it. So I cut all the small pieces on a crosscut sled and routed the edges to make the gaps look nicer. After that I glued these two layers together. Therefore I laid the two long inner parts between two garbage cans. My hope was it to get slightly shaped gunwales that make the mounting to the hull easier. And again I used slightly thickened epoxy to glue the parts together and also a lot of clamps. Making both inner gunwales at the same time I could make sure that the distances of the finger parts were absolutely the same for both sides. When they were cured I cut them to length and to the angle of the bow and stern. Therefore I at first cut one end to half the angle of the bow. I then clamped the gunwale in place and measured where to cut the other end and cut it with a Japanese saw. Therefore I put a water balance into the boat and balanced the wooden rack until the boat was completely balanced out. I then attached a rope to the bow of the boat that allowed me to mark positions on both sides with the same distance to the bow. To these positions I put a wooden part and put the water balance on top of it. This way I could measure if the gunwales were at the same height. At first I attached the inner gunwales with screws, but somehow I made a mistake while measuring the gunwales. I then disassembled the inner gunwales again and glued them in place with thickened epoxy. To hold them in place while curing I used the screws again. Also this way they were at the exact position. Also I put all clamps that I have to it to support them while curing. I then trimmed the hull flush to the gunwales with a hand plane. Next I cut all seats, swords and handles to the correct length and drilled holes into it. These holes were then used to mark the positions of the holes in the gunwales. I did this because I wanted to know where the holes are before I screwed the outer gunwales into the inner ones. But before I could mount the outer gunwales I had to cut the remaining overstanding hull flush to the gunwales. Also I had to make and install the covers for the bow and stern chambers first. I decided to put a dark oak strip into the middle of these covers to make it look nicer and to cover my measurement mistakes in the inner gunwales. I then took two pieces of ash wood, put them in place and marked the contour of the inner gunwales. I then cut along this contour with a jigsaw. After that I glued these two pieces and the oak strip together with thickened epoxy. Once cured I cut the inner side of the oak strip flush to the other pieces. This way the cover can lay evenly on the frame. At last I gave the inner side of the covers a nice round shape. These cover plates were then glued in place with thickened epoxy of peanut butter consistency. In order to make the outer gunwales I took a long um, scarfed wooden strip and cut it in half on a table saw. After that I rounded one edge with a router. Before I clamped the outer gunwales in place I marked all positions of screws, dowels and seat mountings in order to avoid collisions. Next I marked the positions of the screws, pre-drilled and countersunk them. I then screwed stainless steel screws into the outer gunwales at a distance of approximately 20 cm. The outer gunwales were then planed flush to the combing with a hand plane. In order to trim the edges I used a wooden file and sandpaper.
At last I rounded the upper edges of the gunwales with a router and sanded everything with a grinder and by hand. I hope you liked this video, thanks and goodbye.